Welcome to Simbok Designs. Mike Worley here. In this video, we will explore how to create beautiful sliders that are designed for viewing on desktop or mobile devices. We will introduce you to a free WordPress plugin called Smart Slider 3 that gives you all the features you need in the free version to build incredible responsive sliders. We will also give you step-by-step -step instructions for creating a stunning homepage slider to be used for desktop views and another for viewing on mobile devices. We will give you a little CSS that includes a media query that only displays the appropriate slider, depending on a user's screen size. In the process, we will show you how to install the Smart Slider 3 plugin, how to find free images to use, and how to prepare them in Photoshop. We will provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to create one for a desktop and one for mobile devices. We will obtain, edit and place the CSS necessary to display the appropriate slider and hide the other, depending on the device. Then, we will set up your home page to use the new sliders. First, here's how to locate free images. Go to a website called pexels.com. This site has a collection of nice images and videos that may be downloaded and used for free. Go to Pexels and search for the images. Let's try Beach. One by one select three images you want to download. You should select the images with an aspect ratio that best suits your needs. Here we need to select images in landscape orientation that are not busy. This type of image will work best. When downloading, select the size you want. The default is huge, so I use that. I will now download an image to show you how. Then we will skip ahead. Now that we have downloaded the images we need, let's prepare them to be used in the two sliders. I will use Photoshop to do this, but any photo editor will do just fine. All we need to do is resize the images and crop them as appropriate. First, we want to edit the three images for the desktop size, 1200 pixels by 600 pixels. I do this by opening Photoshop, loading the first image, then resize the image by going to image image size and reducing the picture to 1200 pixels wide. It is very important that the image size window has the height and width linked for proportionate resizing. Next, I use the rectangular marquee to create a selection that will render the image at 600 pixels high. Select the rectangular marquee tool. Set style on fixed size and width at 1200 pixels, height at 600 pixels. Now, click at the top margin of your image and a selection of the right size will appear. Move it around to get the area you prefer. When you have the area you want within the selection, Go to image and select crop, and your image is now the right size. Save it. Give it any name, but identify it as a desktop version. I will add DT to the current name. I will only do one of the desktop images to avoid unnecessary repetition. But you get the idea. We will now adjust it for use in the mobile slider. To prepare the image for the mobile slider, select the rectangular marquee tool again, but this time set width for 500 pixels and the height at 600 pixels. Now click the top margin and a new selection will appear. Go to image tab and select crop. Save the new cropped image under a new name. I like to name them the same as the 1200 pixel image but replace DT with the word mobile. Repeat this process for each of the next two images. It is necessary to adjust the aspect ratio for these images used in a mobile slider, because unlike a desktop screen, the mobile screens are much taller than wide. I will only do one image as before. Next, we will install the slider plugin and build the sliders.
While I was gone, I downloaded the other images and prepared them in Photoshop. I also uploaded the edited images to my WordPress media library. We may now turn our attention to building the sliders. Here is a WordPress installation that we will use for demonstration. This is the home page where we will display the sliders. Kind of nasty looking, isn't it? Right now, I have a placeholder image where the slider goes. When we are done, we will have a nice full width slider with text content and call to action buttons on each slide. Go to the WordPress dashboard and select plugins from the menu. Click add new. Search for Smart Slider 3. It should come up with just Smart. When it comes up, click Install Now, then Activate. When the plugin is activated, you should have a new tab in your WordPress dashboard named Smart Slider. Click it. The Smart Slider user interface opens. Select New Project, then Create a New Project. A new window appears. It should be set for project type, slider, and slider type, simple. The size should be set for 1200 by 600. Click Create. Be very careful and follow these instructions exactly. The new slider workspace will appear. In the settings, it should be named Desktop. Go to Slide Size. It should be set at 1200 by 600. Make sure limit slide width is turned off. Layout should be full width. Down to the bottom, force full width should be turned on. Now save your work, then go up to the top again and click add slide. Select the image icon and it takes you to the media library. Here, you will notice that I have a couple of logo images and six beach images. To save time, I am assuming you know how to upload images for use in the sliders. We have three 1200 pixel images for the desktop slider and three 500 pixel images for the mobile one. I will click on the image I want and a check mark appears. To the right are the image details and you can add alternate text if you want. I do not, so I click select in the lower left. You now see the selected image in the workspace up at the top. Now, I repeat the process until I have three images in the workspace. Next to the close box, mouse over the first image and select edit. A new workspace appears. It is impressive. To the left in the menu which lets you add headings, text, image yes, you can add additional images to the slide in layers. I told you this was an impressive workspace. There are also options for buttons and rows. We are only going to use headings and buttons. To the right of the slide workspace is a widget, a different one for the element currently selected. These widgets are a powerful feature that lets you edit and style your elements. In this widget, you can select the content or style options. Each has a stunning array of features you may edit as desired. I will first show you how to add elements and edit them as desired. Over to the left, click, drag and drop a heading onto your slide. The default text in the new heading is heading layer. Double click on it and look to the widget to the right. Notice that it is displaying the text under content. Change the text in the widget to some heading text. You will notice the text changes on the slide view to the left. This is true whenever you make changes in the widget. You can always see the result of your edits. Anyway, let's increase the font size of our new text. Click on the Style tab up at the top, and a whole bunch of new options appear. You have complete control over this element. All we want to do is change the size of the font. Take a minute to look at all the style options you have topography, background, border, spacing and more. This is great, and it is only the free version. Let's go back up and increase the font size to 60 pixels. 
There, that looks good. Now we will add a call to action button. To do so, go back over to the element menu to the left and click, drag and drop a button under the heading text. The new button says more. Click on it, and the widget appears. Like you did before edit the text content. Change it to a linked button. Notice that you can add a link to the button. We are not going to do that to save time, but be aware that this is where you add your button links. Next, let's increase the size of the button text. Go to the Style tab. There, 18 pixels should be good. Now we are set for slide 1 for this slider. To save time, I am going to jump ahead and do the next two slides and we will pick up with the creation of the mobile slider. We're back. Now, let's look at the new slider in action. In the upper left of the slide editor, click desktop and it takes you back to the main slider workspace. Under the general tab, copy the slider short code to your clipboard. Hit Ctrl C. Now exit the smart slider dashboard and open the home page. We will now replace the placeholder image with the slider short code. Hit Ctrl V. Then publish and view the page. There is our new slider. It is very nice. A big change. Now, we will look at it in mobile view. Right-click and select Inspect. Not very nice. This is why we need a slider just for mobile devices. We will now create the mobile slider. Go to the WordPress dashboard and open the Smart Slider dashboard. Select New Project, then Create a New Project. A new window appears. It should be set for Project Type, Slider. Slider Type, Simple. The size should be set for 500 by 600. Click Create. Be very careful and follow these instructions exactly. The new Slider workspace will appear. In the settings, it should be named Mobile. Go to Slide Size. It should be set at 500 by 600. Make sure Limit Slide Width is turned off. Layout should be Full Width. Down to the bottom, Force Full Width should be turned on. Now save your work, then go up to the top again and click Add Slide. Select the image icon and it takes you to the media library. As before, we select the appropriate slides already uploaded, do so in the same order as we did for the desktop slider. Now that we have all the images in the same order, let's add the headings and buttons that we added in the desktop slider. This one will be a little more complicated because of the narrow width of the mobile screen. We will have to use absolute positioning to make it work. Here we go. Mouse over the first slide and click edit. The slide workspace will appear. Click, drag and drop a new heading. Change the content to some heading text just like you did on the desktop slider. Using the style tab, increase the font size a little, not much, try 40 pixels. That should be good. Be careful because we don't have much width to work with. Now click, drag and drop a button to the center below the heading. 
In the new button widget, change the word more to match the desktop's lighter. It was a linked button. In the style tab, increase the font size to 18 pixels, no more. Now, here is the issue. The button and heading are too close together vertically and could turn into a jumbled mess in some mobile browsers, so we have to use absolute positioning of the button to fix this. Scroll down to position. Set it to center and absolute. The button will snap to the vertical center over the heading. Slowly bring the button down and eyeball it so it looks equally spaced from either side of the image. For some reason, the snap to horizontal guide doesn't work. You must eyeball it. There, that looks good. We will now jump ahead so I can finish the other slides without boring you. See you soon. We now have the mobile slider complete. In the upper left, click Mobile. In the General tab, look for the ID number by the slider title. It is 9. Remember that number. Write it down, if you have to. You only need the number. I'll show you why later. Now, go to your home page and open it for editing. Copy the short code for the desktop slider. Paste it on the line below so that you have two short codes, one on top of the other. Now, all you have to do is change the bottom slider ID number to the mobile ID number which is 9. Now, let's publish the page and have a look. Well, what do you think? The top slider looks great and the bottom one looks awful. This is because a 500 pixel image is stretched to full screen width. That's no good, but let's not panic. Now, look at it in mobile view. I do this by right clicking and selecting inspect. Here we have it. The top slider for desktops now looks all wrong, but the bottom one, the mobile slider looks great. We now will add some simple CSS that switches and hides sliders depending on screen size. Next, I will show you where to get the CSS, how to edit it, and where to place it. It's really very easy. Let's do it now. The online smart slider documentation has what we want. The link is in the description below. Click that link when the time comes and you will see this page. I now want to applaud the smart slider people. Their pro version allows you to set up a slider switch like we are looking for with a couple of clicks. Quite unexpectedly, they also give you instructions on how to use CSS2 to switch the sliders in the free version, depending on screen width. Scroll down to show different slider for mobile and desktop. Below that it says publish the two sliders below each other and use media queries to show or hide the slider on different browser widths. Then, there is the CSS we need. Below that is the instructions for customizing the CSS for our sliders. Where the 4 in N2SS4 and 5 in N2SS5 is your slider ID. The code above will make the number 4 slider show up on desktop and the number 5 slider on mobile. Confusing? I thought so too the first time I saw it, but it really is very easy. Just change any 4 you see for the desktop slider ID number which is 6. Likewise, where you see a 5, just change it to the mobile slider ID number. That is 9. Let's do it now. Copy the CSS to the clipboard. Open Notepad and paste it into the text editor. Change all the 4s to 6s and all the 5s to 9s. It's that easy. Now select all the new CSS and copy it to your clipboard. Return to your WordPress dashboard and under Appearance, select Customize. 
In the Customize menu, select Additional CSS. Paste your CSS and publish it. That's all we need to do for the CSS. Now we return to the home page and we see that only the desktop slider is showing. Has the CSS done its job? Let's look at it in mobile view and see. Again, we right click inspect. Yes. Now it shows our mobile slider. It worked. I have tested this in multiple browsers and the only issue I found is that the sliders don't show in Safari for first generation iPads. Thank you for sharing this experience. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider subscribing below. I can't tell you how much it means that you subscribe. If I am to be eligible for YouTube monetization, I need to have 1000 subscribers. We need your support to continue. Please subscribe now and see all the great tutorials we have today and will have in the future. Thanks bunches and good day.